What's up, guys? This is Annie and Duca here to talk Mavs basketball with you guys. Now, with the Mavericks' beautiful playoff run coming to an end, uh, and with the fast approaching NBA draft uh, coming here June 23rd, what more fitting thing to talk about for the Dallas Prospect channel than draft prospects for the Dallas Mavericks? So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing cracked. From Prospect to Lizard. So on draft night, the Mavericks will have the 26 pick NBA 2022 NBA draft. So here's what I did. Compile the list of names, realistic targets based on expert analysis, numerous mock drafts. Um, then I did my own research on some uh, prospects. Um, you know, what are they good at? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? What are the floor ceilings? Uh, you know, all that mumbo jumbo. What talents and what traits uh, can translate to the pro game? Um, and then I mashed it up with team needs, and I put them in the tiers. Here's how the tiers are breaking. Um, I have a tier of one through four. One would be uh, prospects that would be very much excited if their name was called on, on draft night. They're coming to the night. I'll be fist pumping. You'll probably hear audible sounds of me uh, yelling in, in Jubilee. Uh, tier two will be the guys that I'll, I'll, I'll be, you know, Head nod of approval. Uh, probably be like, okay, that's a good pick. The third tier will be uh, guys who uh, will need to be, I'll need to be sold. Um, guys who, you know, I probably won't be over, really excited, probably won't hear anything from me. I will probably have to spend that night on YouTube watching various uh, highlight tapes and uh, just to try to sell myself into being excited about this. And uh, you have the fourth tier, which will, will be guys that um, I would hold my opinion based uh, till I see uh, evidence that they can contribute to this. Thing. Right. So that's kind of how I have it to you. All right. So I'm going to go in ascending order. So from the bottom to the top, so from tier four to tier one. Now I want to break down the mindset of what I'm looking for when I'm looking at a prospect what's going to rank one prospect higher than the other. Um, one of the things that I'm looking at is, can you be on the floor in a playoff setting? Can you, uh, can you, you, know, can you be counted on? Um, and if I project you based on you know, what I'm, my research on, what I looked at on what some of these prospects are good at, if I can't see you being on the floor, then you, of course you will be ranked lower in terms of tiers. Now, this is what I'm looking at, right? Um, if you're a center, are you an upgrade? If I don't think you're an upgrade, I won't be excited. If you are a wing, which I'll be excited about a wing because wings are very valuable in this day and age in, in, a, in the NBA. Now, are you just a 3 and D wing? Or based on what we saw, can you at least project to be a prospect? that can contribute more than just playing defense and shooting threes. Now, if you're able to do that, let's say if you can play defense, shoot threes, create offense for yourself and others, um, and, you know, rebound or do something like that, then, of course, I will be able to project you as someone who can contribute to a playoff team, and then you, of course, will be like, so let's start the tier four uh, prospect. Now, again, to remind you guys, these are the guys that I will not be necessarily excited about. These are the guys where I have to wait until I see some production that gets me excited. So who are these prospects that I've seen? Um, the first one I'll go over is Walker Kessler from uh, Auburn, center from Auburn. He's about seven foot one, seven foot five wingspan, awesome measurables. Um, Here's some notes that I've seen about him. Um, historic college rim protector. I think he, uh, he averaged about 4.6 blocks a game. Very good. Um, he's an, you know, high, he has a high field goal percentage. That's probably, uh, probably due to the fact that he's scoring more at the rim, uh, possibly in lobs. Um, and also, he's tall. He's tall, seven feet one college. 
automatically made some along the way, right? Um, probably good, you know, decent rebounder for his size. Um, so he has a little bit of what the Mavs are looking for in terms of center play. Um, here's some notes I've seen that are negative about him is some of the questions, like you question it. Um, with the implementation of the defensive three second war illegal defense, how does those blocks translate into the NBA? Uh, we've seen that he, he does hunt for blocks. Um, we've seen that he does tend to, uh, you know, just kind of stay hunkered down in the middle of the lane sometimes. And that's probably how he got a lot of his blocks. Um, so how would that translate? That's the big question. Another thing is, is his mobility enough to keep up with guards and forwards in the league? Will he get caught um, on switches playing one-on-one defense? Is that going to be advantageous for him? If, if he can, then that's awesome. But it's most likely based on what we've seen on tape. Doesn't look like it will be a good situation to have him switching on fours and guards. And of course, uh, he does not have a shot that's translatable. Um, it looks stiff. Uh, Percentage-wise, it wasn't good. I think he shot around 20% from three-point range. He can, <clears throat> now he can't possibly get uh, get that up. However, it doesn't seem very likely, um, especially if you're the Mavericks, you, you will kind of want that to be there now. Um, because I don't think we're in any position to take on any more uh, projects at this point. So um, if we can find maybe another center who has a little bit of range in terms of jump shot, that will probably be prioritized higher than a Walker test. Now, uh, Christian Coloclo is the next one in a tier four list. Um, center out of, um, what is it, Arizona? He's about seven feet, seven foot four wingspan. Um, very similar to Walker Kessler. Great rim protector. Um, average about 4.3 blocks per 40. Um, average rebounder, about seven rebounds a game, 11 per 40. Um, and I have in my notes that um, great field goal percentage, I think it's over 70%. However, he does score the same way that Walker Kessler was scoring at the rim. Um, now, the problem with that is he's not a great finisher. Um, I think he heavily relies on his right hand, doesn't have a left hand, um, struggles to score around defense. So he's like, to me, he, he's basically like a Brendan Haywood. If there's a defender in between him and the basket, don't try to score. Um, that's pretty much how he will be used um, year one. Um, some questions about him is, again, he's a little bit more mobile than Walker Kessler, but will he still struggle with those switches? Um, will he be able to handle at least to a certain to a certain point? He doesn't need to lock him down, but can he at least handle a little bit those switches? Because um, we all seen in the playoffs, if you can be the weak link on your team defensively, you will be exploited and we don't we want to limit that as much as possible in the league switchability is king um and of course no shooting plain and simple if you can't shoot your your playing time in this league is very limited in the nba nowadays in 2022 2022 we're probably here on out the nba is a very skilled league so maybe if guys like walker kessler Christian Coloco, maybe if they were coming out maybe in the early 20s or 2000s and, or the 2010s, maybe they will have a shot. Nowadays, if, if, you can't, if you can't provide anything in terms of shooting, in terms of switchability, your playing time is going to be very heavily limited in this league. Um, the third prospect I have on this list is Kendall Brown. He's a wing <coughs> from Baylor. Now, he has very good measurable. I think he's standing around six foot seven, six foot eleven wingspan. Um, but stop me if you heard this before. So, in my notes, this is what I have for him. Great athlete. 
um, has some playmaking ability, good defense. Does that sound familiar? It's like we have a guy like that on the team already in Josh Green. Was Josh Green very useful for us this play, this playoff? No. When Josh Green was in the game, Rudy Gobert was guarding him, not because Josh Green was a lophead or a big guy or anything like that, it's because he can't shoot. Those are the same limitations that we're seeing in Kendall Brown. Um, also, you know, some good things about him, though. Just let me go through my notes. Um, he's a good finisher. He shot around 72.4% um, at the rim. So supremely, supremely athletic. Probably one of the more athletic wings in this draft. Um, but he is a project. And like I said, for Christian Coloco or, or just for the Mavs in general, we don't, I don't think we want any more projects here on out because we're kind of in win now mode. So if we were to get someone like Kendall Brown, he will need to have some attributes that can keep him on the floor and can make him useful for playoff fronts. And and I'm not seeing that. If we had if we added him, um, he will be a dude that will be on the bench. Uh, Reggie and Dodo will have to play still 40 minutes per game. Um, maybe he would, he can come in and play some small ball five um, for us, but again, the range is limited, which that will f all the spacing up. Because even in even in college, when Baylor was trying to make their March Madness run, guys were sagging off of it. So it will be tough for us to drive. It will be tough for Luca to drive in, tough for Brunson to drive in. If they're doing a lot of damage off the off the. Up, uh, of penetration, they're going to be looking at, you know, a dude sacking off of Kendall. Now, can we abuse that with, you know, with wide open jump shots? Doesn't look like it. So that being said, it's not likely that uh, he will contribute very much in a playoff run. Some other issues that I've seen, oh, some other issues that um, some scouts have seen that is very questionable um, is he he actually. Defensively, yes, he has tools and he can project to be a very good defender somewhere down the road. But oddly enough, he does get blown by a lot. Um, he does not have, according to some experts who have watched extensive film on Kendall Brown, um, doesn't have a natural defensive field. So that's a lot of red flags um, that we've seen for Kendall Brown. So, like I said, if he was picked up by the Mavericks at 26, um, I will have to see things to make me excited. I'm not going to be excited about drafting him right off the bat. So on to tier three. Now, as a little recap again, uh, these are the guys that I need to possibly be sold on. I need to actually, you know, as soon as their name is called, I will probably have to watch some YouTube highlights. Um, I will probably need to look at some expert analysis, really do a, di a, a deep dive in, into the person who's chosen to possibly get me sold on this prospect. Um, so, first one I have is uh, Max Christie, um, forward wing out of Michigan State. I think he's about 6'5", somewhere like a 6'8", week span. Um, here's what I've heard about Max Christie. Um, he was a highly talented shooter coming out of high school. Um, he's long, so he has good defensive tools and he used it pretty well. Um, and he also... He will be a two-level scorer uh, as soon as his name is called, so it has some um, some usefulness in the NBA game. Uh, I don't know why I'm so close. Jeez. Anyway, ow. has some usefulness in, in the NBA. I'm uh, not going to be a team three guy, um, so maybe he can attack closeouts. Um, however, the thing that concerns me about him is his year in Michigan State was piss poor. I think he shot uh, somewhere around 31% from three um, in college, which 31% is, is not good from college. So imagine what it was like to be in the NBA. Now, of course, we have Luka Doncic. So if he's on this team, Luka might create a little bit more uh, wide open looks for him. And he he may be able to attack closeouts well, so that that could it could work out well for him. Um, also, 
the last 16 games in the season, he shot somewhere like in the 20s. So, not good. Um, uh, he he was a like a borderline tier three, tier four. I, I I will need to see something to get me excited, but I can possibly get sold on him if I if I watch him. The thing about him is also he's, he looks pretty skinny. Um, he's really can he handle you know playing with men in the NBA. A majority of his uh, field goal attempts were were jumpers. So um, is finishing something he's going to struggle with? Uh, can he turn into a three level scorer if you add a little bit of muscle to him? Um, who knows? That's what I would have to see. I have to get sold, but he is project level. Like I said, um, I, he was someone that I was teetering on the edges of tier three, tier four. Next person I have on the list is, I think, Israel Kamagate. Now, Israel Kamagate um, is definitely someone that can be sold on based on his measurables. I think he's around six level, six, seven, three weeks back. Um, he's a center uh, playing out of Paris. Um, unlike the other centers I went over, um, Walker Kessler, um, Christian Colocolo, he actually does have some mobility. So he can actually handle a little of this, which is in the NBA. At least he's at least he's projected to be able to handle uh, switches in the NBA. Somewhat better than those last two. Uh, so he's a little bit more mobile, uh, which is good. Um, very good uh, finisher. Uh, again, most of his looks probably came from, you know, dunks, putbacks, uh, stuff at the basket. So it is what it is. That's what big men do. Uh, also, he does have some shooting ability. We saw some shots from the mid-range. So if he shows that propensity, maybe we can increase that range. Um, but at least right now, uh, he is capable of hitting the mid-range shot. Is that going to translate? We don't know. At least I know as of right now, he has it in the bag. Unlike the other one, other centers that we looked over, who did not. That's why I'm in the, I can get sold on him. Um, one thing about him, I think he's about two he looks about 225. Um, definitely someone who needs to add muscle. Um, he's a good rim protector. Good, uh, he, like I said, he can switch. However, he does tend, I don't want to say tend to, but there is some plays where I've seen him get lost in in kind of like in the defensive play where um, he kind of overhelps or uh, gets trapped in no man's land uh, where, you know, he, he has a hard time uh, I guess getting helping out on the on the pick and roll. So that is something that I guess we'll have some questions about. Um, but is that's that can be coached out fairly quickly. Um, the next person uh, I will need to get sold on is I guess that has something against Big Man. Hmm. But Jalen Williams uh, from Arkansas. Now. Uh, actually, I like what I've seen from Jalen Smith. I'm not Jalen Smith. Uh, Jalen Williams, um, Arkansas big man. I think he's about 6'11", um, over seven foot wingspan. Uh, the guy is not a, a super athlete, not the most athletic big man in the league, but he has a, he has a pretty unique skill set that can get me sold on. He's a, actually a pretty good passer from what I've seen. Um, and uh, he's a decent rim protector. He's not the levels of Colocolo, Kessler, or even Kamagate. Um, he, I have seen some uh, some plays where he was good on help side, and good with and good with rim protection. Um, but where he is bred is butter is actually drawing charges. He drew quite a bit of charges in uh, his final year in Arkansas. I think he was like one of. The, I want to say SEC Defensive Player of the Year or something like that, but um, it was actually quite impressive from what I've seen. So um, his jumper looks a little wonky. I'm not sure about the, the switchability, but he, he plays hard, so maybe he could be able to handle himself a little bit. Um, so I'm, I'm a, I can be sold on straight up. Um, next guy I have on the list is uh, who else? Who do I have? Bryce McGowan. All right. Bryce McGowan is one of the few guys that I think he's probably the only guy on this list um, who's oh, pretty much a one-way guy. Uh, 
uh, everyone um, who I've who I had the maps projecting has some defensive ability, except for Bryce. Now Bryce McGowan is a, a forward from or guard forward from Nebraska, he's six seven, uh, like a, somewhere like a six ten wingspan, something like that. A long player. Um, he he's a guard, but he's a tall guard, which I like, and, and that's probably why I have him on this list of guys that I will can be sold on because you know I have an affinity for tall guards. I, I grew up a Michael Finley fan, and he was a six seven two guard, so. It is what it is. But some notes I have on Bryce McGowan is he's a, he's a, he has some shot creation. Um, he's a good fit for the Mavs uh, offensively. Um, you know, he can project to shoot somewhat decently with the catch and shoot. Um, and he can get to the rim pretty well. I think he has, you know, somewhere around like eight point something uh, free throw attempts uh, in, in the season. So, that that's good here's the bad is defense holy moly i don't think i've ever looked at a prospect whose defensive tape was as bad as i saw from Bryce Giannis. now that it is the question about that it is is it a effort issue did he carry a huge load i i didn't watch a lot of nebraska basketball this year i didn't watch any bright nebraska college basketball this year so i don't know what kind of load did he have offensively um that probably made him want to you know not put as much effort on the defensive end but if his defense is anything from what i saw on his tape yikes it's bad Real bad. I'm talking like blown by. I'm talking about he does that thing where um, he will let the defender blow by him and he will try to back tap it, which I hate. Um, it's the ultimate cop out move because it works. It's just, it works a small percentage of the time to to a point where it's not it's not very useful. Like just I rather have you try to um, you know fight back to get in position. Then have you do that because it's automatic. It's an automatic L. Your defense is on until everything breaks down. If you let your guy, if you let your guy just go by, so that's definitely he's 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 definitely also teetering towards tier four, tier three. Um, that defense is bad. I, I, I don't think I can get over that. Next guy I have on the list is really enough. Uh, the next guy I have on this list is uh, someone that I, I was actually quite high on. Uh, a couple months ago, two, three months ago, uh, when I wasn't doing much research on on draft people, and some do that, you know, if he was available for the Mavericks to draft, I'd be very ecstatic. If I were to do this list two months ago, he would be tier one. And that's because I wasn't doing a lot of research. But this guy is Patrick Baldwin Jr. Uh, out of Milwaukee. Um, he's a six nine forward from. Uh, I think with a uh, eleven wingspan. Um, the thing about Patrick Baldwin is his shooting. He, he has a very fluid form, uh, high release point. Um, he can shoot from you know threes. He at least projected to shoot from threes. He shot forty percent in the EYBL uh, circuit in high school. Um, he has some mid range play. He also has shown some flashes of the ability to hit some tough shots um, in the in the mid posts and stuff like that. So that can be useful, especially if you're playing against a team that likes to zone up like the Warriors. Um, he definitely has the steal of the draft potential if we're getting him at 26 because of his pedigree. He was very highly touted coming out of high school. He played in the U19. He played for the US in the U19. Um, I guess World Cup, something like that. Um, however, in college, he didn't have a good showing. Um, it was very disappointing. Probably one of the most disappointing uh, college prospects in this draft uh, because he was rated so high coming out. And then uh, people questioned his decision to go to Milwaukee to play with his dad. And he looks like he proved a lot of people right. People were not 
highly excited about what they saw. Um, not the quickest guy, very slow, somewhat slow footed. Um, he has an injury in his lower legs and that kind of hampered him a little bit. And, you know, that prob all that together, once I did the, once I did the research, it definitely took him down in multiple tiers because I, I actually need to see what he can do. Maybe in the summer league, he shows us something um, to get me excited. Um, but I, I could watch a couple of his YouTube videos and <laughs> I'll be like, okay, we can use this. I'm, I'm a very optimistic master. Now on to tier two. If you remember tier two, tier two is, are the guys who get my head nod of approval. I won't be the most excited, but I won't be mad at the pick. I'll definitely see how this, uh, how the Mavs brass have come to the conclusion about using their draft pick at 26 to pick up any one of these guys. Um, now, if you're paying attention, if you're, the, if you're paying attention, you're going to notice that a lot of the negative notes I have for these guys are, are very few. I think I even have one that has no negative notes. Um, but they, these guys are the people who have a cover, at least on a, on a prospect-wise, on both sides. So, on to my first prospect. This guy is Marjon Bochamp. I hope I said that name right. Marjon Bochamp is about 6'6", with a 7-foot wingspan. Uh, he played for the G League Ignite team. Um, hey, this guy is super athletic. Long, um, very good tools for defense, uh, especially on ball. It's very, because he's very athletic and he's very long, he can cause a lot of disruption, at least on ball um, defensively. Um, and on top of that, he also has some scoring acumen too. Um, We've seen, I, I've seen him, uh, you know, use his length to get to a rim. I've seen uh, some catch and, some catch and shoots and pull up from from threes and from twos. Has some ability to make some difficult baskets. So it's something that I do value when I'm looking at guys uh, potentially fitting in with the maps. Can you create, at least for yourself, um, when the other guys like Luca and like Jalen has tilted the defense over to where it's more advantageous for you to attack or to shoot. Um, I don't need, what I'm not looking for is people who, I mean, if you can do this, it'd be awesome. Um, but if you are not like an ISO player that can take this guy off the dribble and score at a high volume, um, I know that's going to be tough to get at number 26, so I'm not valuing that in terms of uh, you know, tier one, tier two, tier two, super heavily. Um, of course, if you're able to do that, you're going to probably be, um, you know, valued a little bit higher. But it's, it's not like that's exactly what I need. That's a plus. Um, so, and none of these guys really have that ability. Um, but the, the negative notes on Marjon Bochamp is just, you know, IQ, defensive, defensively, does he overhelp? And does he tend to get lost, which does happen with a lot of players nowadays as we put a lot of emphasis on growing the offensive game. A lot of, a lot of prospects are, are not coming in with the best defensive IQ, and that's something that they have to learn once they get to it. And offensively, too, as you have seen some um, notes about him not taking the, not the best shot selection, sometimes over-reliant on athleticism that couldn't put him on in bad spots. Uh, but that's something that, you know, it can be coached out of very quickly if you're paying attention to what the coaches are. And I think we have a good coaching staff over in Dallas anyway, so I think that'd be coached out. Um, next one is Blake Wesley, uh, guard from Notre Dame. I like this kid. Um, this guy projects well, long as well, which is pretty much a lot of the guys who, if, again, if you're paying attention, I like guys who... <laughs> Are long because long means it can it can uh, make up for any deficits that um, these pro these prospects may have. You know, if you're not the if you're not the best foot wise, like if you're a little slow footed, but you're long, it can help it can help make up for that. So um, Blake Wesley, I think he's about six five with a six eleven wingspan. Um, good has 
guy has good defensive versatility. He can guard up from point guards to, to small forwards pretty effectively, and he's shown that in the college game. Offensively, I like what I've seen. Has the ability to um, hit threes from the catch and shoot wise, also has the ability to pull up. I've seen a lot of tape about him pulling up from mid range. Now, I'm I'm not like most of these people who, who super value the three and and I, I do value the three, however, however, but if you can also hit the, the mid range pull up, I do I do tend to value that more than I guess your average uh, person who watches and has opinions on NBA basketball. Because um, that can be used playoff uh, in the playoffs. Now we saw that a lot with the Mavericks, as um, you know, or I guess with like the Suns and the people who they were going up against, is they tend to use the mid-range game a lot because that's what the Mavericks were allowing. And if you're good at that, you do tend to kind of mess with defenses a lot more than you know defenses. I mean, offenses that are are just uh, catch and shoot. Um, now, I guess the negative note with uh, with Blake is the streaky shooter, which you're probably going to get that at a young kid coming out of college. But, but uh, you know, nothing too terrible. The negative notes I, I saw from him are, are, to be honest with you, not even noteworthy for me to even uh, bring on this video because it's stuff that I don't believe he's going to be super responsible for if he's on, uh, if he's playing for the Mets. Now, the next guy I have... Um, on the list, on the tier two list is Christian Braun out of Kansas. Um, he's the only prospect on this list whose wingspan is shorter than his actual height. He's six seven with a six six wingspan. Um, however, he does he does cover what I'm looking for on both ends. Well, a little bit to a point. Um, shooting is good. Um, very good off ball, um, athletic. You, um, People will probably overlook his athleticism because they do tend to see the, the skin color. He's he's white, so people will do overlook his athletic athleticism. Probably not uh, think of it as anything. Um, but hey, the guy can shoot. The guy has good defense, man. He's a high motor. Works hard. Um, the my one negative trait on him is um, he does tend to rely on other people to create for him. Um, so. I mean that's it. Of course, like a lot of these guys are gonna are, who are coming on, on maps are gonna have to learn how to play it off the ball, or not learn, but you know, gonna have some gonna be gonna need to be able to play off ball at a, at a at a a level to which they can earn a way to be on the court. Um, because you're gonna be playing with Jalen Brunson, you're gonna be playing with Luka Doncic, Spencer Dinwiddie. Those guys are gonna be doing the majority of the creation. Now, can you create? Can you create off what they have built for you? Once the defense have collapsed, can you shoot? Can you attack um, and close out to pull up and, or finish at the rim? Um, I do see Christian Braun at least be able to do that for for himself. Now, can you create for others? I don't, I didn't see much of that. Um, but like I said, for Blake Wesley or or Marjan. I, I probably didn't say that, but I, I didn't see very much play making <laughs> for them. Um, but that, I don't think that would be their responsibility. I mean, Dorian Finney-Smith was very good for us. He didn't have a lot of playmaking. And then the same with Reggie. Now, the thing about Dorian Finney-Smith and Reggie is they're D and three guys, right? They, didn't, they are very limited in terms of offensive creation. They're not pulling up. They're not, one, they're not doing a one dribble pull up. They're not uh, going to get into the basket. Now, if we can get guys that can do that, that's where I'm going to value. Um, so, with that being said, I'm going to move on to the next prospect. And, uh, and Dalen Terry, um, guard out of where, where did Dalen Terry play for? I think it was Arizona, too. He played for Arizona. I like this guy, too. In fact, I like him so much that I didn't even see, uh, I don't even have a negative thing to say about Dalen Terry. This guy, Plays hard. Deep, he has defensive versatility. Can guard ones, twos, threes. Um, I think he's about six seven, with a six ten. I haven't memorized everyone's wings. Sorry, I'm not that great. <laughs> but he's athletic and he does have some offensive ability. He's 
he he's in the mold of a of a Dorian Pace, of a Reggie of a, uh, a Reggie Bullock. Um, in terms of he's able to play defense and he's able to hit three. Now, where he is can be more useful potentially than those guys is he does show a little bit of playmaking ability. Um, so which is good. So imagine imagine if Josh Green was able to hit threes um, and was two inches taller, that would be Dale and Terry. So um, I don't have a lot. I don't have any negative notes on on He's a, uh, you know, he could be a, a dude that can come in and can um, produce for us. He can contribute to winning basketball. I do see someone like him be able to step in day one and contribute to on, uh, on a playoff rotation basis. So he might not start, but he's someone that can be brought in maybe over Frank or certainly over Josh. Um, so that's what I have on him. Time for the tier ones. Now, these guys are the ones that I will be really excited about. I'll actually probably give out an audible yell, uh, and shout and praise of, uh, uh, you know, Nico and Mark that turn their ways and they begin to take this draft seriously, even though they're choosing in the, tw- in the end of the first. Now, um, these guys, I oh, have three. Um, I have very little negative marks on them uh, for what they're what they bring to the game, what they can potentially bring to the team. Um, and my gosh, man, I'll be I'll be very excited to have these guys. So we're gonna start with the first one. Um, now, I will admit that some of these guys will be a little hard to get. Um, if one of them slips and falls, <laughs> wow. And not slips and falls, but if one of them falls uh, to us at 26, uh, that would be, be wonderful. Wonderful. So the first guy I have is EJ Liddell, 6'7 uh, forward out of Ohio State, the Ohio State University. This guy is like a, a little Draymond-esque um, in the fact that he's uh, probably like a, a prototypical small ball five. Um, has a lot of good defensive versatility. Could probably guard, you know, ones through fives. <laughs> he's, he's that good. Very strong guy. Um, very smart guy. And offensively, he, he, he's pretty, really, actually not pretty. He's actually really useful offensively, even more so. The thing that differs him from Draymond um, is, you know, he's turned into, you know, quite a useful shooter. He has that in his ability where Draymond relaxes a little bit. Now, back in the day, for some reason, Draymond could shoot, but now he's not that much of a shooter, but he's able, because Draymond's such a smart guy, can use his abilities to affect the game offensively in other ways. Now, um, what I've seen in EJ Liddell, um, I've seen the ability to hit the corner three. I've seen the ability to score off the post, even though it's probably not going to be utilized that much in the league. Um, but he's a very smart guy. He's he's some dude. He's the type of guy that even if we have Rick Carlisle uh, coaching the Mavs, I I believe that he will actually play EJ Liddell as well. That's probably the highest form of praise I can give to a rookie uh, coming out this year. So I'll be really excited. Um, I've seen mocks of him being chosen somewhere as high as 17. Um, I've seen him actually been mocked probably about one or two mocks to to Dallas um, so that does get me a little excited um, the next dude um, I'm going to talk about is probably out of these three is the most gettable um, most likely to fall to us at number 26 that's Wendell Moore Jr. from Duke Wendell Moore Jr. from Duke is uh, his name his full name is now officially Wendell Moore Jr. from Duke um, he's he's probably about 6'6 six, six. Um, 6 11 wingspan long guy um, but he's the type of dude that can literally contribute in any, every facet of the of the game he's not great at any one thing but he's not terrible at anyone. Um, good defense one on one end team he's a good playmaker um, he has the ability to score at all three levels um, not anything spectacular in any one of those things um, 
but if that if I also have a negative mark, is that he's not spectacular in one thing, but he can contribute in every facet of the game. He is some dude that has potential to be a very high level role player in this in this game. Uh, that if he was to come to the Mavericks, I'll see him. You know, he, he might start off off the bench, but maybe you know it will give us the ability to possibly move off uh, someone who's a little bit more expensive and have him move into a full time. Uh, starter, starter, uh, starting position. I can definitely see that with them. Anymore. So I'm really excited about him. Um, like I said, really no negative marks aside from if you take the fact that he's not really exemplary of one attribute. If you count that as a negative mark, then I guess that's a negative mark. So, um, but to me, it's really not. There's some dude that he can come in day one and be a contributor to. A rebuilding team to a contending team to a team that's looking to you know, go over the hump. And all 30 teams could find use of Wendell Moore Jr. from Duke. So the next guy, this next guy who I have actually, if I, uh, when I started the process of this video, he was actually pretty gettable. And now that I'm at this point where I'm actually recording, he has turned into a dude that is, is will be lucky to have to have him fall to us at number 26. Um, and it's kind of disappointing because, uh, you know, once I, once I, you know, did, um, you know, my research on this guy, I instantly was like, man, we, we gotta have this guy. And that's Jalen Williams from Santa Clara. Jalen Williams from Santa Clara is a dude who has the tools to do it all. Absolutely everything. Like I said, a window more. Um, he he's not great at everything, but I mean, he's not great at anything. But he's good at everything. Um, the one thing that makes Jalen Williams stand out amongst all those other other prospects is, you know, his attributes. His, um, the fact that he's about six six, um, the seven two wingspan it has probably the longest arms I've ever seen. Uh, of a guard, and I can't be wrong, but you know, whatever. I don't memorize wingspan. But what can he do with this? What can he do? Um, this guy is a playmaker. If you look at his tape, he's a very high level playmaker. He he reminds me of a little bit of I don't want to say I don't want to say like a, a, a James Harden or something like that. But he has that ability. He has a, a medium paced, um, very um, reading the defense type offensive game to where he's not like going at 100 miles per hour um which i which i like he's very controlled um and when you're that controlled i i feel like you're able to affect the game more because it'll be harder to scheme for you because of someone that's able to counter most everything that uh defenses throw at you that's something that really has me excited so he can be a good on the ball uh prospect and he's also good off the ball. He can someone that can he, he shot 40% catch and shoot threes last year with Santa Clara. Um, which he can fit well with Luca on the on the court and also fit with Luca off the court and Jalen Williams. So man, I'll be so excited to have him. Um, he's not the greatest athlete in this draft. Um, but man, actually I have his no, he was his catch and shoot was 48.4% from three last year. Holy shit. That is incredible. That's insane. So, I mean, that's a dude that I will, I will want. If we were to get Jalen Williams um, for some way. Now, when I, I've i seen him mocked to Dallas in, in a couple, but every time it's updated, I've seen him go from, from 37 a couple months ago to now he's going as high as like 17, 16. Some people are talking about him being a potential lottery pick. Um, he's definitely a fast riser. He's definitely one of the winners um, coming out of the combine. Uh, he played in both the scrimmages. And he showed out, man. You know, he showed a lot of things that a lot of teams will be excited about. Had very, um, uh, I guess, he had his traits are something that every NBA team would want um, if they had an opportunity to get him. Out. Um, like I said, he also has defensive tools. He's shown the, the ability to play good on-ball and team defense it's gonna to be tough to get him we'll have to we'll, 
we will have to literally rely on the incompetence of the other couple of teams that are around us <laughs> to have the opportunity to draft this guy. And I hope that's the case. Um, so, man, I'll be so excited. So that's the prospects I have for you guys today. So how did I do? Do you agree with the analysis that I had for these prospects? Did I miss anyone? Do you, who, who do you think the Mavericks are drafted 26? Go ahead, let me know down below in the comment section. Um, and also you can follow us on Twitter at the, not the, but at Dallas Prospect and follow me uh, at Annie Yunduka. And that's the end guys. Remember, every legend was once a prospect. See you guys.